So tomorrow is uh, one year since the war broke out. Uh, on February 24th, uh, 2022. Uh, I think to many people's surprise, certainly to my surprise, uh, this is one I did not predict, I did not see coming. I, I, I definitely thought that there would not be a war. But in, on February 24th, uh, 2022, to my surprise, and I think to many people's surprise, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and invaded Ukraine from a number of different locations, it invaded Ukraine uh, uh, from the south, it invaded Ukraine uh, dramatically from the east, the northeast, all the way to Kharkiv, uh, north of Kharkiv and northwest of Kharkiv, and then down from Belarus. Uh, you, uh, uh, Russian uh, troops staged in Belarus uh, invaded uh, Ukraine and, and uh, made uh, pretty strong progress in the first couple of days uh, on their way to, uh, to Kiev. If you remember, right off the bat, there were significant battles just outside of Kiev at the airport there, uh, where Russian special forces were flown in. The first real indications that Russia was going to have a hard time was how difficult it was and, and how, uh, how quickly they had to retreat from that airport and how many casualties they took. And, and it seemed surprising to them. Uh, I, I think the Russians expected uh, to be able to control the airport very quickly, then to fly in. Um, uh, airplanes with troops and supplies and use it as a base of operations against Kiev and basically to take Kiev within a week. I think generally um, the expectation of the Russian forces was that uh, Kiev would fall, that they would control Kiev and uh, that, uh, you know, the rest would be irrelevant, uh, that, that Ukraine would basically would basically surrender at that point. Um, uh, the uh, at, 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 at that point, and remind me to tell you why I don't like the term Putin's war. Um, by the way, Super Chat is on. I, I would appreciate support over the Super Chat while I'm traveling. Um, I know it's um, not as many people are listening, maybe not the same people are listening, maybe people who, are, who don't have quite the means, but uh, those of you watching after the fact, you can still support the show by pressing uh, like a, a donate button on YouTube uh, after the fact. It doesn't have to be live. And of course, you can support the show on youronbookshow.com slash support on Patreon or Subscribestar. But I would appreciate the support while I'm traveling. Um, it's not like um, I don't have to bring an in income while I'm on the road. Uh, it would be great. And, I'm, I'm, and I am trying to do as many shows as I can. So uh, in reflection of those shows, it would be great if we got some, um, some support, uh, realizing it's not going to be the normal levels. Uh, let's see. Um, so, uh, uh, on, uh, you know, in, in that first week, I think almost all commentators, all commentators out there, I saw a lot of uh, a lot of former generals, a lot of military commentators, basically tell everybody the same message: uh, Russia's going to win this. Just a question of time. They might have set back here, set back there, but there's no question this is going to be a Russian victory, uh, and and uh, it might take longer than people expect. It might take longer than the Russians expect. But Russian overwhelming force is going to win this. And I have to say, I was one of the few people who said, I think it was day two, wait a minute, slow down. I, I'm not sure this is going to go that way. And, and my, my, main, uh, my main point was uh, that both the Russians had no motivation, Russian soldiers had no motivation, uh, Russian weapon systems were, were primitive and, uh, and unsophisticated. And on the flip side, uh, the Ukrainians were heavily, strongly motivated, right? Strongly motivated. And they were using very advanced uh, uh, Western weapon systems, particularly anti-tank weapons uh, and anti-aircraft weapons. And uh, they were achieving massive success on the battlefield because of these things. And, and, I, and I, think, I think there were, and, and I, I said from personal experience, because I have personal experience, uh, about T-72s and, and Russian, uh, Russian weapon systems and how primitive and how behind they were as compared to the West. And I have to admit, I didn't even realize how behind they were relative to the West. Uh, and I, I think that has all played out uh, during the war, the, the, the fact that the Russians are unmotivated and that their weapon systems suck. I think a third element, which I did not realize, but which has become real, very, very real, and is becoming real every single day, is, is just the, I don't know what the term, how to call this, I don't know, maybe strategic decadence 
the fact that Russia has no strategy, the fact that Russians still fight wars like they do, uh, like they did 80 years ago, the fact that Russia's way of fighting wars is just to throw troops and tanks and weapon systems at a problem and just frontal assault. And, and uh, you know, the way the Russians are fighting this war is just, it's just shocking and horrific it, and, and, and lacks any sense of strategy and certainly lacks any sense of caring about casualties and caring about how many people on your side are, are, are killed. Um, a complete disregard for Russian soldiers' lives. I mean, I've always known the Russian weapon systems, at least Soviet weapon systems. Uh, d d you know, there was no real concern about protecting your own soldiers. But I would have expected in the 21st century in, in, in Russia and no longer Soviet Union that there'd be some concern and some rethinking of strategy and some thought about how to, how to, uh, how to strategize here. Nothing. I mean, a, a complete, a, a complete uh, you know, ignorance of, of military strategy and a complete uh, you know, inability to... to, to uh, a just strategy based on uh, based on what's happening on a battlefield, a, 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 you know, basically in Bakhmut right now. I mean, Russian soldiers are fighting trench warfare, a, a World War One style trench warfare, to try to recapture a town. They've been fighting for it for six months. They have lost thousands and thousands and thousands of troops uh, killed and maimed on this one battlefield for this one little village or one little town. And they made almost no progress. I mean, they've made some progress, but very little progress at the cost of thousands and thousands of lives. And they just keep coming. No reconsideration, no change of strategy, no trying to find a weak, uh, you know, weakness in the, in the, um, uh, in the uh, Ukrainian uh, front line, no attempts to go around, nothing, just head on, straight, boom. And, and, and just complete and utter disaster, uh, disastrous consequences uh, to the whole thing. Um, so, uh, you know, Russia here is, is, uh, is losing uh, tens of thousands of troops, uh, by some estimates, in terms of uh, killed and injured. The numbers of Russians is over, well over 200,000. Um, remember that when the war started, Russia... Uh, Russia invaded with 200,000 troops. Uh, today, we can say there are 200,000 casualties. What Russia has been doing over the last few months is sending, sending untrained young recruits who know very little about war and know very little, have very little training uh, to the front lines. It's why so many Russians are dying and so little progress is being made. Uh, this is a barbaric way of fighting a war, and it's it's... It's, you know, this is a, a mentality of suffering, a mentality of uh, uncaring about human life uh, that is, I think, in the world in which we live right now, uniquely Russian. Um, and, you know, maybe the Muslims, uh, Islamists, the radical Islamists share this attitude towards complete disregard for individual life. But, it, but it's truly rare in the modern world to see people just throw the lives of tens of thousands of people and not care, just not care. And 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 let me just say, this reminds me of of of, of this issue about Putin's war. This is not Putin's war. This is Russia's war. Um, this is not one man uh, launching a, a war just for his own ego. His own ego plays a big role in this. But this is a whole system, a whole system of government, a whole system, a whole regime, a whole regime that is basically being supported by the Russian people, if only by their own acquiescence and the fact that they have not rebelled and not argued against it and not, uh, uh, you know, uh, stood up against Putin over the last 20 years as he has uh, solidified his power. Uh, you know, what, what has happened, uh, what has happened in the consequence of the Putin regime is not new. It's not a surprise. It's not. And yet the Russian people have allowed it to happen. Uh, it, you know, it, it, this is a war of the entire Russian elite, the, the oligarchs, the generals, the Politburo members, the, 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 the rest of the uh, business and military class that allow Putin to do this. This is not, this is not, I don't care how scared they are. If they're scared, they deserve it, right? If they're paralyzed by fear, they deserve it. This is Russia's war. Russia is to blame. Uh, the Russian people are to blame. If, you know, 200,000 of them are dying and being maimed 
they can't rise up against Putin? They can't destroy Putin? Of course they can. They lack the will. They lack the will, and, and, and many of them, and maybe a majority of them, buy into you know, Putin's, uh, Putin's illusions. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.